Okay. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, few words about me, in case you don't know me. My name is uh, Radek Suski. I'm software developer. I was I was uh, OSM di director, and yeah, I currently um, Joomla events team leader. And uh, yeah, I'm involved in many ways in, in the Joomla project since the beginning as well. When we are looking for uh, something to speed up our website in the uh, in the web in Google, we will find some few tutorials, which is really funny because I found that those tutorials you can find on the web are actually copy one of another. So it looks to me like someone wrote a good article once, and other people just copied it and then posted it in the website, more or less. But anyway, it's actually good at the beginning. What, what we are talking about when we come to, to, to speeding up your web, website is, of course, you need to have a good hosting provider. That's clear. Um, you should always use the Joomla cache and the Joomla cache plugin as well. And Gzip is actually a very good idea to use it. In the meantime, it works actually very, very good. You should leverage the browser cache and you should optimize CSS and JavaScript as well. Um, what is really important in, in today's world is image optimization. And they are talking many times about using uh, speed optimization uh, extension. So step by step, when it comes to hosting, I saw advice like this to use virtual private server or root server. And I have to tell you, I'm using Linux like about 15 years already. I started using Linux as it was common to compile own kernel because the, uh, the provided kernel was mostly incompatible. I am managing four own server and I don't consider me myself as a hosting expert. I would never give the advice to someone to, to get a dedicated server or virtual private server because I know people from the hosting companies, and I know that they are actually expert in this in this field, and they know what they are doing. I have no, no even with, with my experience, I don't consider myself being a hosting expert. So, if the only purpose for you is to speed up your website, I wouldn't con wouldn't advise you to get virtual private server or um, or dedicated server. Just use good web hosting provider. Uh, when it comes to Joomla caching, um, we have the option in global configuration to uh, enable the, the caching. I always recommend to use the conservative caching. And um, we have different cache handler. When you have, uh, uh, when you have installed like memcached or APC, you can use different cache uh, handler for Joomla cache. And to be honest, we tried uh, APC, memcached, memcached, daemon, and all those different uh, cache handler, and we always fell back to, to the file cache handler because it's actually the most rela reliable. Uh, with those other handler, you have always the problem that Joomla is not able to send a signal to the, to the caching server to, to, to purge the cache. So if you are using a different uh, caching handler, it happens a lot that you uh, have to wait like about half hour or 15 minutes because the, before the cache is going to be invalidated. Um, I definitely recommend to use the GC page compression. Um, it's basically uh, instead of sending plain HTML code over the uh, over the network, it's just caching it like a zip uh, like zip file, for example, and sending it as a zip uh, stream. And the browser is able to decode and unzip it on, on your on your browser on your on your end, and this is a huge redu reducement of uh, what? <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Yeah. What? Okay. Um, would you prefer the the Joomla GSIP or the Apache Deflate? Yeah, actually, we, we, we use both. But uh, if you have the Apache, then yeah, Apache definitely. Okay. Yeah. So um, the problem was uh, in the previous version of Joomla. I don't know actually if it was Joomla's fault or Facebook fault, but I know that when you are when you were using GZIP compression and you wanted to share something at Facebook, Facebook was not able to to get the information from your website. In the meantime, it works. I don't know who fixed it. 
but it works. So I definitely would recommend it. Um, it's also, yeah, you want to? Yeah. Uh, a question about GC. Uh, if I have some templates of GC compression too. Yeah. Yeah, I have noticed some problems when I have GC in the journal core and the template. I don't think that's this uh, any issue. I, I guess they are probably compressing some like of a JavaScript or something like this. So I wouldn't say that, I, I'm not, not sure, entirely sure about this, because I never heard about it, to be honest. Yeah. But I don't think it should be any issue. But it may cause problems, I've, I've noticed that too. It's just like those two concurrent GZIP processes just okay. be, uh, yeah. kind of can cancel each other out, I guess, is yeah. the way, best way to That's weird. It. And it can create a certain form. Okay, so then I would recommend to use the Joomla core functionality, definitely, always. Uh, the Joomla plugin cache. Um, you have it in Joomla uh, global configuration. You have you can enable cache, and it is caching part of your website, like modules or components. The, co the extension using this uh, cache have to support it. The plugin cache, which can be found in the plugins uh, um, in the Joomla administration area, is actually caching the entire website. It's it's creating HTML file and putting it in the cache folder and if another user is going to visit, a visitor is going to visit this website and the caching, uh, caching file is still valid, then it's just serving the HTML file instead going to the entire PHP code, which is really a huge performance boost. So it's, I would really recommend it and yeah, to definitely to use it. Uh, when it comes to browser cache, there is a very simple method to you leverage. Know, yeah. On the previous page, you had disabled. Uh, this is the uh, uh, platform plug specific. Plugin disabled. Is it? On the previous page. Previous slide. No. So the, the cache plugin. Next one. It's disabled. Oh yeah, it's disabled. Okay. It's actually it's I took the screenshot of my developing uh, uh, environment, and I I have to have it disabled by default. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, it's caching the entire website. So Yeah. Really yeah, that's true. But I, I don't know if you, have, you, you can. I think it actually doesn't cache the login page. Yeah, it yes, it does. But it does. It does? Okay. Yeah. It does work with the that's weird. You mean to say the modules or the pages in which you don't want mm -hmm. the page? Like yeah, you can disable the no, specific yeah. websites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you can, uh, as I said before, you can leverage the browser cache, which basically is a, a piece of uh, code in HD access. I'm not going to, to read it all. I'm going to publish my, my uh, presentation later so you can copy it. It's basically said that, well, it's really uh, a little bit hard to see, but it's actually said that when you are accessing like image pictures, JavaScript files and so on, then the expiration cache is going to be leveraged to one year or something like this, which is really good performance boost as well. Um, optimize CSS and JavaScript. So the first thing I would like to tell you always to use a good template. Um, when you are, I, I saw templates with like about 50 or 60 JavaScript file and CSS file, and this is really a painful. This is really, really bad idea. And we are actually using a good template, Joostrap template, which is actually very nice and yeah, <laughs> and, and and it's actually very good templates. But still, even in Joostrap template, you still have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine JavaScript, ten JavaScript files. And you have to you have to know that every time you are you are visiting a website, your browser can send. If I'm not wrong, only four requests at once. Eight. eight. Eight? Okay, eight. Thank you very much. It's only in HTTP 1.0. Yep. Yeah, but we are still using it. Yeah. No. Yeah. You can use HTTP. Yeah, you can. So, you to. so when you have to load more resources at one, and then it's not only JavaScript, CSS file, but it's also pictures, images, and whatever, fonts, and so on, it's taking a lot of time. So what we are actually doing, we are removing it from the template output, and then we create a file called template.gs.php. And in this file, we are just listing all those JavaScript files we need to load, 
and reading those files and outputting in uh, one by one. Okay? And then instead of all those JavaScript files uh, in the template, we just put it here, one single JavaScript file, which is actually a PHP file. And then we have one connection, one request only. You can, of course, do the same with CSS as well. Uh, the other thing is, however, that you have to consider that probably some extensions are going to load PHP, uh, G JavaScript files, CSS file on, a, on their own. So what we did is uh, we have a special plugin, system plugin for, for our website, which we doing a lot of things, a lot of stuff for uh, customizing Joomla. And in this plugin, we are using the method on before compile head and just checking for those files. And if those files are already loaded in the header, we remove it those files. Oops, sorry. We, we are removing those files from the output. So if some extension loaded those JavaScript file, then we just remove it again. <coughs> image optimization. You have to know when you are putting an image uh, online, usually when you take a picture with your, with your digital camera, this picture, this file itself contains a lot of information that actually are not necessary on the web. So as you see, we have like about 700 kilobytes for this one image. And we have a lot of information here, like for example, the name of my camera, the resolution, uh, the currently used focus length, and so on. This is nothing that the browser actually needs. So what is important is to remove those information from the, from the image. And we, when you remove those information from the image, as you can see, we, we save about 100 kilobytes for, for this one picture. But we removed all those information as well, because we don't need it on the web. Um, what I'm using actually for image optimization is so-called Image Optim. It's a free application for Mac OS. Uh, <laughs> when you are looking for some alternative, I don't know, but there's a great website called Al Alternative 2, and then you can uh, slash software slash image optim, and then you can find uh, image optimization software for Windows, Linux, or whatever. Um, there is another way. Um, when you have access to your server, or let's say if someone installed co uh, application called J op uh, JPEG Optim, which is a command line uh, uh, application, uh, what you can do is, for example, run a crunch, cr crunch job, crunch job, crunch job uh, once a day, which would actually go through all your images in your directory and just compress it and just remove all those information from... Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, is your slide deck going to be online? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a special uh, application for, uh, for uh, JPEG, and there's another one called PNG Quant, which does the same with PNG files. So this is the idea you can actually uh, run in Crunchup, uh, Crunchup and uh, just automatically uh, optimize all your images. Yeah, go ahead. How, how uh, is that optimized? Uh, is that uh, lossy or lossless? Yeah. Or it's uh, actu actually mainly you remove those information from the pictures uh, file which are not necessary on the web and it's compressing it as well. Have you uh, checked whether this is uh, compliant with Google PageSpeed Insights? Whether you know, the compressor is as much as the Google PageSpeed No, I don't Insights. actually. <laughs> yeah? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, um, so another adv um, advice we had in, the, in this tutorial are so-called speed optimization extension. And I'm really sorry, but I'm not going to talk about it for the simple reason. I don't like use, uh, installing uh, extension on my, <coughs> on my website uh, can actually achieve something without this extension. I know it's uh, sometimes really strange. People are using, for example, special modules to uh, enable Google Analytics in, in their website. This is actually a piece of code you can put in the template. And I don't need any extension to it. And I don't actually need any extension to achieve uh, this, what I was talking about before, or comprim uh, compressed JavaScript file and CSS file and 
uh, and uh, image optimization and so on. So I simply don't like to have a too many extensions on my website because it's ha hard to man maintain and, and to manage. Uh, okay, so wh what can we do else? As I said uh, at the beginning of my presentation, when you, your only goal is to speed up your website, I would never recommend to have a, a dedicated server or virtual private server. But what I am talk going to talk about now is actually you need your own server or at least access to the command line. Uh, console, and actually, actually, you have to be able to administer uh, your, your server. So what I'm talking about is called Vanish. Yeah, Vanish is so-called uh, proxy cache server. So what is happening usually when you are going to call uh, a resource in or website in, in your in your browser, it's sending a request to Apache, and Apache is responding with the resource back to your browser, and it's going to be loaded. That's actually everyone everyone know. Uh, I think what we can do is we actually can push vanish in the front of Apache, of Apache, and then this request is going to be sent to vanish. And if vanish had the resource cached, it's going giving it back to the to the browser. And if it doesn't have this resource cache, it asking Apache first, and then Apache responding to vanish, and vanish is giving this resource back to your browser. And you could now think, okay, it's actually more complicated than just calling Apache directly. Uh, so how can this be faster than, than uh, calling the Apache directly? So the main issue is when you are, for example, call, calling an image um, on a server, this, uh, this Apache is going to, to take this picture, this image, from the hard disk drive. And this is a lot of uh, thing happening with when, when you are reading file from the hard disk, input output operation and so on. Vanish, however, is caching this resource in the re re read access memory, so RAM. And before, because we all know that this is actually much faster than accessing the hard disk drive, it's the main advantage of using Vanish. There are, however, some issues with Vanish. Vanish should then work on the port 80, but Apache is already working on the port 80, which actually is for, for, for me is not an issue because I would always recommend to use, to use port 443 for SSL or HTTPS. I think Google, in the meantime, forced people as well to have a secured website with HTTPS. So when you have a HTTPS website, you are probably going to be rank, ranked better in the Google search. Uh, but still, even then, we would need to put Vanish on port 443, and then we cannot run Apache. So it's a kind of issue. But there's something called mod proxy. We are using a lot of uh, mod proxy. For example, we have a so-called Simbra suite, Simbra suite. I don't know if uh, anyone knows this. It's actually email server with document uh, management and, and ca calendar and so on. Um, we have a C file uh, working on port 8082. C file is kind of Dropbox on your own server. And then we can put Vanish on port 8080. And then when someone is going to call Apache on port 443, Apache know that for this particular d domain, it has to redirect all the traffic to Vanish server. And now it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, because what we are going to do is, now when we are calling some resource, we are calling Apache on port 443, and then Apache know, okay, I need to contact Vanish and call Vanish on port 8080. And then Vanish is responding to Apache and uh, deliver the content, and Apache is delivered this content to your, uh, to your uh, browser. Yeah? Uh, uh, isn't all this back and forth kind of defe defeating the purpose? Yeah, I, I know, I know. That's no. actually, it's, I, I, to, I, I wanted to tell you later, it re looks really weird and very complicated, but it's still much faster than using Apache directly. Vanish on the 80 port for free or whatever, Apache on the 8080. 
so that is the issue. It's very hard to put uh, uh, Vanish uh, to work on HTTPS. It's really very complicated. I didn't find any good uh, solution how, how can you do this. And the second thing is it's also a little bit complicated to, uh, to configure uh, Vanish working with, uh, with different websites. And we have on one, one web server more than just .situ.net. We have Sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, instead of we use the a a patch as a content, we use a verse proxy like Nginx. Mm, yeah, I, I, I that's, that's my plan for, for, for the future to, to well, check okay. Nginx and so on. Yeah, <laughs> Nginx too. Hmm? You get cash on Nginx? Yeah, I, I know, I heard about it, but you I never have, tried it. Uh, you can have only Nginx when this is the Yeah, that, that thing is, um, I'm using uh, Apache like for about 10 years and it's really hard to switch to something something different. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, as I said, it's getting a little bit more complicated, especially in, that, in, in the situation that Vanish doesn't have the resource cached. So what's happening now is we are calling Apache on port 443 and Apache is, is uh, redirect the traffic to the <coughs> port 8080 for, for Vanish. And when you said, okay, but I don't have this resource, so I have to co contact Apache back on port 80, because it's where our website is actually running on. And then Vanish is responding to Apache, Apache finally deliver your content to your browser. Okay, it's, I, it's look a little bit complicated, but I, I can tell you still, it's really much faster than Apache directly. What about patching with SSD? Uh, it's, it's, sure. SSD is still, it is still a hard disk drive, which even if you, maybe in the future we will have some better uh, mechanism to access SSD, uh, uh, SSD uh, the disk directly, but we are still using the old architecture in our computers, which consi con consider that we have a hard disk drive, which is not SSD, and it's going for, to, to the bus and so on, so it's still very, very slow comp compared to RAM directly. Um, I, 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 as I heard about Vanish the very first time, I was watching video of a presentation from Joomla Day Germany of a guy, I don't remember his name, who was talking about Vanish as well, and he was pricing Vanish and uh, it's a good solution and so on. And one thing he didn't say, uh, it is actually not, not, it's almost impossible to get Vanish working with Joomla. <laughs> <laughs> Because Joomla is sending by default no cache header, which is actually a good thing because we have a, com uh, it's a content management system, right? And we don't have a static pages. So Joomla is sending uh, no cache header, which says Vanish, uh, do not cache my content. But one thing you have to consider when you are calling a website, this is a, uh, a test of our website. We have a uh, times like under one second sometimes, which is pretty cool. Can so you when you take a hmm? when you take a look at this, you can see that actually the main address, so the index.php, contains like 8.2 kilobytes of data. The entire page contains four, <laughs> almost you. Fa fa almost 450 kilobytes, right? It's because actually the weight of your website is not the HTML code which is being generated into your browser, but it's assets like PHP, like uh, JavaScript files, like CSS files, like pictures, like fonts, and so on. This is the main, main uh, part of your website, of your weight of your website. So this is actually what we, what we can cache with Vanish. And when you consider that we can uh, cache like about 440 kilobytes of the entire website. It's a really a huge performance boost. Um, so, I'm really fast now. It's not really good to read. But as I said, I'm going to publish this uh, online so I, you can copy it. So this is our Vanish configuration file, Vanish Nita configuration file. And there are two main methods. It's, uh, this for, uh, one is for receiving and one for uh, responding with the cached, uh, cached uh, content. 
So what we did here is, for example, we said if the code resource is J JPEG, uh, PNG, <coughs> GIF, CSC, JavaScript file, icon, and so on, just return the cached content. Okay. Uh, additionally, it is a special case for uh, Sobi Pro. <coughs> because uh, we are using Sobi Pro for everything actually, and our download directory is also with Sobi Pro, and there is a task called download file, and we are caching it as well. So those file people are downloading on our website are already in cache, and doesn't have to be read directly from uh, from the hard drive. Uh, yeah, there is a special case for Sobi Pro as well called J JavaScript text um, uh, font also explicitly cached as well. And this is our RSS feed. And here's now a bonus for you. You can actually configure uh, Vanish that way that you will uh, uh, avoid hot linking of images on your, on your website. So what we are tell telling here, that if someone is uh, accessing our documentation and the referrer of it is not our website, uh, and this is JPEG file or something like this, CSS file and so on, we said uh, return 403, uh, forbidden uh, uh, header with uh, the message no hot, hot link, please. And we did it because we had uh, people uh, who are copying our documentation from our website, completely including images and so on, and putting this documentation somewhere online, but those images are still on our server, mm -hmm. which is pretty annoying. So we better just. Better for traffic. Huh? Better for traffic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, and the other thing is uh, here, uh, when responding, we are removing the he header uh, um, user agent. Because what I found at the beginning as I was starting testing Vanish was uh, I called the website with a browser, let's say Safari, and then uh, I called this website with another browser, let's say Chrome. And I saw that actually I have a lot of cache, cache content but Vanish is not delivering it to the Chrome. <coughs> and then I found out that, uh, that uh, Vanish is um, depending very much on those user agent header. So when it was caching only the content for the exact the same browser, which is pretty weird because you can have two different ver versions of, let's say, Safari. And when you are going with one version of Safari, on the, on uh, one visitor is going with one version of Safari and the other visitor is going with another version of Safari which can be different, like minor version difference, it still won't deliver the cached content. So what I did is actually, we are doing here, we said that, uh, that uh, Vanish should remove the entire user agent stream and should ignore it. And finally, what is also important when you, uh, when you look at the Google speed results, it says all, uh, many times there is something, uh, a message like um, um, no, not cookie-less uh, images. Which means basically when you are accessing a website, no matter what, and there is a cookie in your browser, uh, the browser and the Apache are going to, tra to translate, uh, as a talk with each other about this cookie even if you are accessing something like picture, which doesn't make absolute sense. So what you can do with Vanish is that when we are accessing files like PNG or whatever, CSS file and so on, remove cookie because we don't need a cookie for this. And Google, Google really like it that you have picture, uh, pictures, images, files and CSS files without cookie. Okay, I think that's all. Any questions? Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm a little wondering because you said uh, the, the page, you enabled the page cache plugin, and my observation is that uh, once I open a page, it's cached, but for smaller websites, uh, say 2,000 sessions a month, um, I would like to have five to six pages cached at all times. Um, so when, when I call the page for the first time and it's not cached, it takes like I don't know, 300 milliseconds. When I call it again, it's cached, and it takes like 80 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. How do I achieve uh, having the pages in cache at all times? So what you can do is uh, you can crawl. With, uh, uh, I ha I'm using, for example, um, application called, called PageSucker, <laughs> which is actually 
um, designed to download entire website to steal our website, but I am using it for my own website and running it through all um, pages, so it's just being cached. Yeah, you can use a job too. You can, yeah. And, uh, You can use contracts as well, but the, the problem with contracts is you need to know all your URLs. Yes, you yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. You can. Yeah. Um, huh. um, <laughs> okay, let's um, finish. Um, that with, I've been testing uh, using Metacash and Radar and so on and so forth, and uh, actually, what I'm observing is that a lot of times. Takes four to five seconds until the first bytes are arriving. Yeah. And I've been talking to Jesse Reinsma. Uh, if anyone here knows about that problem and wants to create a tutorial to solve that problem, talk to me. Then we create it here. Okay. Uh, but I would like to know why this is the case. I have no idea. As I said before, we were testing it as well, and there was actually various reasons why we <coughs> just avoided using it. But one of those uh, reasons is I found it too that the uh, memcache is kind of very slow at the beginning. And the, quest the question is that could it be a server malconfiguration? But what then mm -hmm, would yeah. I tell my administrator to, to fix? I don't know. Mm, yeah, I, I, mm, I didn't test it deep enough to tell you what the problem is, but it c can be, of course, a uh, server misconfiguration. The problem with mem memcache, we had also that uh, um, you have to close the port from outside because we are we're getting emails from the German government that we have an open port for memcache and it can be used for hacking, and whatever. So, yeah. Can, uh, for memcache, you said there was some, some issues with the multi-language website. Oh, and okay. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, so I, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Since PHP works uh, on a per page basis, uh, each time you use something that's not file, you have to connect to that. Mm -hmm. And usually that's slower in a case than writing a file. Yep. But how could that take four to five seconds? No, that's, that's, that would be something strange. I would ask the site to analyze because uh, I know okay, on their server it doesn't take four to five seconds, yeah. but it's still slower. Yeah, it's just and in other systems, like you know, uh, Redis or, or Memcache works very well because you, do, you open the connection once when you open the server and then you have the CPC connection open, so it's way faster than you can find. Okay. But on PHP, you are opening a new connection <coughs> time and you uh, get this bottleneck of connection. What's more of the vision? It's very fast open. Yeah. It's, it's but it's still fast. not as fast. Are you using a socket and we'll come back to TCP? Okay. This is what's new. Or what my head server admin told me is that you can try to do pretty much anything you can do with Memcache. The problem is that its implementation in Joomla is not entirely fortunately done because it's simply inefficiently implemented. And it's the same with APC actually. Yeah. 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 Now, what I wanted to ask you is that because uh, you previous, uh, earlier in the presentation you said that you uh, always advise people to use uh, conservative caching. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the benefit of using that? So uh, if I'm co you remember correctly, when you are using progressive caching, it's actually caching the website for the particular user. Mm -hmm and not for all visitors, which kind of doesn't make much sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, then it make makes probably sense. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you didn't come up with more headers in HTSS. Does it mean when you have uh, this varnish or browser patching, you don't have to use uh, more headers to patch static file like JavaScript? What headers? More headers in HTSS. Oh. Header expiring. Yeah. I'm sorry. Actually, I see more headers. Yeah. In HTSS to catch the. Very part of JavaScript or CSS. Yeah, yeah, okay. You can still do this in the in the HTAXS file, but when you are changing those files, uh, then you have new files or whatever. It's not going to be cached so, uh, immediately by your by your browser. So it's still. But there you is can a define the file timing. Yeah, I, I, we are defining it. Yeah. Oh, did I got it wrong? No, I, I didn't see that. Before. Oh yeah. Um, uh, because I w the, the the resolution of the um, of the beamer is not really very good, and it's uh, basically um, no, no, no. Yeah, here yeah. it's kind of <laughs> unreadable. But I, as I said, I'm going to put it online so you can actually copy it. Yeah. So one thing worth mentioning is that it's something you can achieve also by using the CN. Yeah. The advantages, but now that we got uh, <laughs> CDNs that can provide SSL HTTPS access very cheaply, uh, it's what it was an issue before. Yeah. A, a CDN with uh, HTTPS are very costly, but they are. But in mean, the meantime, I actually also have my. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your input. Anyone? So, uh, uh, recently not. Uh, before we were, we were trying with CGA and and so on, but uh, we are. Okay. Okay. Okay, what, what handler was it? It's the Okay. Good to know, thank you very much. Anyone else? Then thank you very much.